Hi and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk again about our RTX 4090 Strix, the one which I did a very professional re repair attempt on. Yeah, first of all I want to apologize to everybody who had to suffer watching this video. I'm totally aware that my attempt was far from being professional. As I pointed out, I don't have the equipment to do any kind of professional like BGA rework and I also don't have the knowledge to do it. Getting the equipment, as many of you pointed out, like getting proper, I don't know, heat gun equipment, whatever, certainly is possible, but getting the knowledge, it's something completely different. I know where we can get the, the knowledge and that's going to be Chris Fix, because I already talked to him and I can tell you he was very impressed and very happy about the way I handled this card. He totally approved the way of handling it with the heat gun. Maybe not, but yeah. He agreed that he will investigate the card, he will look at the individual components, GPU, memories and everything. He will try to figure out what's wrong with the card and if there is a way to rescue this RTX 4090. I also want to point out that the reason why I did not RMA this card, because a lot of people also asked for this, is quite obvious. It's a sample from ASUS I received for the initial review. At the point of the review, the card did not have any technical defects or anything. It just appeared after we did all sorts of modifications, after disassembling the cooler multiple times. At a certain point I figured out that something is wrong with performance and then we saw that something is wrong with the PCI Express lanes. But that was after I don't know how many times I handled the card and I don't know at which point exactly this happened. But it's definitely my fault because the first like week when I tested the card for the normal review in stock condition everything was working fine. I just want to make that clear that it's not a Zeus fault, it's just my fault of handling the hardware. And obviously I have good contacts to ASUS, I could always call them, ask for a replacement, ask for repair, I could do all these kind of things, that's quite obvious, but at the same time I personally find it more interesting to see what you can do in these kind of conditions even if it's a 4090 and if there is a simple or maybe also a cheap way to fix it and if it's not the case, like we saw, that it's maybe an attempt that you should not do then it's I think also good knowledge to know that this is an attempt you should not try because now we know that it's just it's just a bad way of handling it and if you would have this condition then you should not do what I did and that's I think also a good thing to know a good thing to learn. Before we send it to Chris I want to just go over the card just quickly look at some spots because a lot of people had multiple theories what could be wrong like the BIOS chip, the memory, the GPU, that, whatever. One part was also that the captain tape ripped off some tiny SMDs. I think in theory that's definitely possible. I checked everything also back like last week when we did the video. I checked the tiny components around and I could not see anything that's misaligned. And we will just check it again before we send it in because Obviously that's that's a possible defect, but I think that's not the case what we have on this card. Hetzner is a leading hosting provider and data center operator in Europe with hundreds of thousands of servers in operation. By combining its strengths in innovative technology, attractive prices, expert support and flexible customer service, Hetzner expanded its markets both within and outside Europe. They operate their very own high-tech data centers in Germany and Finland. Hetzner also offers high-performance cloud servers for an amazing price. And not only this, Hetzner is now already covering both the East and west coast of the United States with their latest location in Hillsboro, Oregon. Now you can deploy cloud servers in five different locations and benefit from features like load balancers, block storage and more. Find out more in the link below. I think the main point where a lot of hot air would attack some of these components would especially be the gap between the GPU and the memory because we left a tiny gap when we applied the flux in between these components. And as you can see, the tiny like resistors and caps, some of them are angled like 45 degree, but that's normal. You can find that on the left and also on the right side, also on top of the GPU. That's totally intended, so they're not misaligned. You can also find these in like images online. If you research, all of this looks totally fine. I checked all these kind of small placements. And if you zoom in, you don't see any like empty solar spots or anything, so I don't think that we ripped off any of these like small components. 
Some comments also stated that we maybe changed the positioning of the GPU. I'm not sure how like realistic this is because the GPU is also fixed with glue on a corner. I think this would hold the GPU in place even if the solder is liquid. At least that's my assumption, I'm not sure. Maybe Chris can later correct me if that's correct or not. For the memory, the memory is not glued, so that could maybe move by a little bit. But again here, just just looking on the memory ICs and everything, I cannot I cannot spot anything that's like misaligned. And at least as far as I can tell, it's the same for all the components on the backside, behind the memory and also behind the GPU. Nothing looks like like misplaced. That's why we will now assemble the card, send it to Chris, and hopefully he has something to say or some way to save it. Hello everyone and welcome. Today we have one graphic card. This is 1490 from the Bawa. I think a lot of you already know what's happened to this card. I have watched his video also. The main problem was the card uh, was recognized with four lanes instead of 16. And uh, he was thinking that something is wrong under the GPU chip here, broken connections maybe. And he decided to reflow the GPU chip. First, he used a preheater to heat the board up to 100 degrees, which is very good. But after that uh, comes the hot air gun on top, which is a very bad idea. Problem number two is the captain tape. He basically used the captain tape on the whole board. And this is a problem because when the solder liquefies, can displace some of the components and this can make the, the future repair much more complicated. I'm surprised here because I was expecting to receive this port completely burned in this area, but I will show you a closer look. And as you can see, the covers of the GPU chip right here in this area, they are looking perfect. No discoloration there and the board is looking like from the factory. This only means that the Bawa was very careful and I don't think that he used uh, so high temperatures here. I have just started to work on this board. I think that we can fix it, so wish me luck and thank you. A few days later, as you can see, I have my RTX 4090 Strix back on my table, received it back from Chris Fix. And before I'm going to spoiler what actually he did, if you want to watch his full repair video, then you can find the link in the description. In case you don't want to watch it uh, or you just want to have a quick summary, then I'm going to do that. So basically first he was measuring all the basic data of the card, like all resistances of memory and so on. And then he also checked the PCI Express slot, which I had issues with prior to that, like that's what we had originally with the lack of PCI Express lanes. And he found out that in the state where he received the card, all 16 lanes were working. So we kind of fixed the PCI Express slot while we damaged a memory chip. And when he removed the memory chip for replacement, he found some corrosion on some of these pads. And he said, or he told me over WhatsApp, that he thinks this happened during production of the card. So there seems to be like a small damage during production that happened to this particular 4090. And maybe that was also related to the issues I saw, or I probably just made it a lot worse with my, yeah very unprofessional repair attempt. But I found it very entertaining and also very nice to see what kind of skilled repair he actually did. And uh, I absolutely recommend that you watch his video with the full repair. He also took off the GPU and did a full BGA reballing and uh, just did a full resoldering of the GPU. And now from his testing, everything should be working. Also, if you would do this normally, if you would own this card, or it could also be maybe an RTX 30th gen card, because usually if this is a 40th gen card, you should have still a warranty on your card and you can just return it to your seller or to the vendor. But if it's an RTX 30th gen card, you might have some cards that are now leaving the warranty phase and then yeah, you might be left with a card that has some damages. In this case, the repair for this card would have cost about 220 to 230 euro. Considering the value of the card, it's absolutely recommended to do that. And yeah, I'm very happy that we uh, did this step. And also thank you for recommending him in my comments. But now I think let's just open up the card and see if it actually works now. I mean, that's something we have to test. The card looks exactly the way and state as when I send it to him. 
that's a good sign. Now I will plug it in and uh, let's see what happens. Well, that's not good. It's again stuck at postcode 97, which is the VGA detection. That's really obscure because he tested the card in his rig even under load. Like he even showed a full 3D mic run. Everything was working fine and I cannot even get it to boot. I think I will just try a different setup. And now to double check, I'm just running a B550 board with an AMD CPU, so completely different platform. Our, uh, yeah, cat repair doctor inspector is here to help. But unfortunately, even uh, Sheik could not help us. And as you can see, yeah, it's, it's again, or still stuck at 97. Now that is something I did not expect because I could watch the video of his like repair and also testing before which is not public yet at the point of shooting this video but I saw with my own eyes like how he repaired it, how he did the testing, he ran a full 3D mic and everything also like MSI combustor tests and like the card was running everything was fine now it's on the table it doesn't even boot that is very weird and then I got in contact with Chris again asked about his opinion like if he has any idea and he said that it might be that if one chip was damaged then actually all of them could be damaged but at the point when he was checking them only one was faulty and now maybe during transport because basically it was shipped all the way through Germany and I don't know you don't know how they handle the packages on their way during transport it could be with some like vibrations and stuff that maybe a second chip is now also damaged and uh, he said that the best I hear is probably to reball all of the memory chips and check if this helps to fix this. So I will just send it back to him. Also, if you would in theory have the same thing, like if you send something in for repair and it's damaged, like you receive it back and it doesn't work, there is a warranty on his repair. So you can actually return it and he will fix it again. Because honestly, from what I can see, this is not his fault. It's not his fault because you could see that everything was working. And now it's damaged again.